Should Power Five football programs schedule or be scheduling FCS teams? This is something that comes up um, a lot uh, in the college football community, and opinions are varied. Um, and, uh, there's different reasons for saying, yes, uh, I think they should, or no, I think they, uh, shouldn't, um, Georgia plays an FCS team this coming season. We play Samford. Um, and you know, some people are okay with that. Some people kind of could care less either way. And you got some people that are just adamantly against it. And I honestly understand all sides of uh, of all the arguments, I think. I don't mind it. Um, now, do I enjoy watching Georgia play an FCS team? No, I don't. Uh, nor do I enjoy watching Alabama play one or uh, Tennessee or whoever. Just name the team. Clemson, whatever. I do not enjoy watching these big programs play FCS teams. I mean, it's just not that much fun to watch, you know, a team beat somebody up by 40, 50 points when it's just clearly a mismatch. A lot of times these games in the second half, they, they do a running clock type of deal. And, you know, in the second half, you don't even you, you don't recognize any of the players on the field anymore. I, I, I don't enjoy that. Now, I'm different than some people in that. Yes, Georgia is my favorite team, clearly. I don't do anything to try to hide or deny that. But I'm a college football fan, first and foremost. So if my favorite team, Georgia, is playing Samford like they are this coming season, it's not a wasted Saturday for me. I'll watch the first quarter or so of the georgia Samford game just to kind of see how we look. But there's a dozen more games on that day, on Saturday, that I am looking forward to watching, at least on any given Saturday, right? I, I mean, I, I've show, I, I've got, I mean, how many TVs do I have in here so I can watch all these different games? I'm a college football fan, so it doesn't bother me from that aspect. Like, oh my God, Georgia's playing, a, you know, an FCS cupcake. What am I going to do today? Well, I'm going to watch football all day like I do every uh, Saturday. <clears throat> uh, one of the arguments you hear in favor of, of Power 5 teams scheduling FCS uh, opponents on their schedule is the financial windfall that the FCS team usually receives, right? $250,000, half a million dollars, a million dollars in some cases, these FCS teams are paid to show up at some big Power 5 stadium um, and get humiliated, right? And the argument is, well, without that huge influx of money that those FCS teams get once or twice a year, they wouldn't be able to afford to have a football program at all. Now, I'm not smart enough on the ins and outs of the finances of these FCS schools to know how true that is, you know? Um, could they find a way to survive without getting, you know, a million dollars a year uh, to get beat up a couple of times by uh, Power 5 programs? I don't know. Um, maybe they'd have to cut corners somewhere. Do I, I mean, the answer is I just don't know if that's true. If that is true, I I, I don't want to see, I don't like seeing football programs go away, wh whether that's on the FCS level or really any other level, right? There's only so many spots in the Power Five every year for high school players, right? And with recruiting the way it is today, generally speaking, I think these Power Five programs, for the most part, get it right in terms of you know, who they recruit versus uh, who an FCS school would recruit. But still, if you're a high school, I played football in high school. Um, I was, wasn't good at all, really. Um, you know, but if there are high school kids who their only chance to continue playing football after high school is going to be at the FCS level. And I don't want to see that huge number of kids uh, lose the ability to play football if that's what they want to do. And again, I don't know how true that is or not. Like, oh, you know, oh, well, if, if, if Georgia doesn't give Samford a million dollars this year, they'll have to shut their football program down. I don't know. I mean, we've seen group of five teams shut their programs down because they can't afford it. UAB a few years ago had to shut their program down. Uh, they're back now. But so, I, you know, money is an issue. Um, so, you, you know, I, I don't know. I'll say this. When it comes to scheduling in general, um, I think if you're going to schedule an FCS opponent, give me 10 Power 5 games then. Um, you know, uh, some conferences right now are playing eight conference games. The SEC and the ACC, I believe, are, are playing eight conference games. 
The Big 12, the Big 10, and the Pac-12 are playing nine conference games. So we'll, we'll use the SEC as this example here. Georgia's playing Samford this year. Okay, that's a throwaway game in my opinion. But you better give me 10 Power 5 games, which means the eight conference games and two additional Power 5 opponents. Now, Georgia, like a lot of other schools, plays a non-con uh, uh, non Power 5 opponent every single year. Uh, Georgia plays Georgia Tech at the end of every single year. Insert the jokes down below about how Georgia Tech is basically an FCS school. I get it. They're terrible right now, to be honest. There is half a dozen, a dozen uh, group of five schools that would be a tougher test for Georgia right now than Georgia Tech. But you guys know college football ebbs and flows. You know, Georgia's not always going to be a top five program like they are right now. And Georgia Tech's not always going to be in the toilet bowl like they are right now, as much as I'd like to think that. It's not going to happen. So so they are a power five team. And Georgia's got Oregon on the schedule uh, this year, right? That gives me 10 power five games I get to watch my Georgia Bulldogs play in the regular season. I'm okay with that. What they do with the other two, I've got no issue with personally as a Georgia fan. If they want to go out and schedule um, a Samford or a whoever else they want to schedule, uh, maybe make the next one a group of five. Um, I definitely, definitely don't want to see power five versus group of five games go away. I, I definitely don't want to see that. And I don't think I've ever seen too many people even advocate for that. One of the only ways the group of five teams have to sort of prove to the doubters or the naysayers that they quote unquote belong, right, is if they get an opportunity to play a uh, power five team and, and saying, well, there's a lot of bowl games that involve group of five versus power five. So why do you need it in the regular season? Well, you already know the answer. Bowl games are bordering, bordering on meaningless now. You got so many players sitting out at the Power 5 level and the Group of 5 level. That's not really an accurate uh, uh, view of if a, if a group of certain Group of 5 team is you know, able to compete with the Power 5. I want to see these games in the regular season when teams are playing for a reason still, right? Definitely don't want to see those go away. Uh most of the complaints, at least that I've noticed anyway, about teams scheduling FCS opponents come from, honestly, Ohio State fans. That, that, those are the fans I hear complaining about it the absolute most. Um, no, we don't schedule FCS opponents. Okay, great. I mean, you schedule Bowling Green and Miami of Ohio. I mean, are they knocking down any doors? I don't think so. Um, now, I don't care who Ohio State uh, schedules. Um, one thing's for sure, they ain't scheduling no SEC teams. That I can tell you. Maybe if Ohio State would schedule an SEC team, an SEC team wouldn't have to schedule an FCS opponent. But they don't, because every time Ohio State plays an SEC team, what happens? They get beat. Uh, Georgia had a home-and-home -home schedule with Ohio State. Guess what Ohio State did? They backed out of it and signed some kind of scheduling arrangement with the Pac-12, and they played Oregon. And then what happened? Oregon came to the shoe and beat you. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent here. There's plenty of fans down here, too. There's plenty of Georgia fans, Alabama fans, Florida fans, Clemson fans, whatever, you name it, in the South that don't like uh, the FCS games, too. So it's not strictly an Ohio State thing. It's just that is that does seem to be the fan base that I hear bring it up, uh, bring it up the most. Um, you know, in terms of scheduling FCS teams, too, I would be in favor of some sort of regulation or something where – Okay, you, you can only schedule an FCS team that's in your own state. If we have to prop, if the University of Georgia has to prop up somebody else's football program by paying them a million dollars to play there, let it be Mercer. Let it be Kennesaw State. Um, I believe those are the only two FCS programs in the state of Georgia. So it, Georgia wants to play an FCS opponent once every three years, rotate back and forth between Mercer and Kennesaw State. If we're going to be subsidizing another school's football program, let it be an in-state school. Clemson can schedule Furman. Alabama can schedule Samford. They're from Alabama. Uh, Florida can schedule whatever FCS teams are in Florida. Uh, you, you get what I'm saying here. Um, but to get back to the original question, should Power 5 teams be scheduling FCS opponents? In general, no. Um, I, I don't like it. I don't like watching those games. But again, I understand, I guess, why some schools do it. Um, you know, another issue is just how scheduling works in general. 
There's no governing body. Well, first of all, there's no governing body in anything when it comes to college football. The NCAA is a complete joke uh, and, and just a waste of everyone's time. But there's no real governing body when it comes to scheduling. Now, you have conference rules revolving around you know, how many conference games you have to play, and in some cases, how many Power 5 uh, non-con games you have to play after that. But, you know, these schools that go out and they schedule these teams, Georgia has games scheduled t uh, 10, 11, 12, 13 years down the road. I don't know how much sense that makes. I really don't. It can't, it, the NFL doesn't even publish their schedule for the upcoming season until like six months before the season starts. Does Georgia really need to know now what non-con opponent they're playing in 2032? Because we have non-con opponents scheduled in 2032. The other issue with scheduling games that far out, well, first of all, it's hard to find somebody that's, that, that'll agree to do it, uh, which is, I think, where a lot of these FCS opponents come in. It, it, look, rarely are FCS opponents scheduled 10, 12 years in advance. If you look at the games that Georgia has already scheduled through like 2032, it's Oklahoma home and home, Texas home and home, Florida State home and home. Three more games with Clemson in the next, you know, eight or nine years, whatever it is. Georgia's not scheduling Samford now to play in 2035. I think what's happening is as as seasons get closer, right? Like like Georgia right now is probably looking at the 2024, 2025 season and going, man, we got a, a gap here. We got our eight conference games. We got Georgia Tech. That's nine. We've got Clemson scheduled in a, a neutral site opener. That's ten. We need two more opponents. Who can we get? Well let's call Sanford and ask them if they want a million dollars. I think that's what's happening. So maybe put something in place. Maybe regulate scheduling. So I would love to see all five conferences go to the same scheduling model. I'd love to see that. I would like to see nine conference games uh, with a minimum of 10 Power 5 games on the schedule every single year. My only concern with going to nine conference games is you take a team like Georgia. We play Georgia Tech at the end of every year, right? Well, if the SEC goes to nine conference games and you have to play 10 power five opponents, that's going to be all Georgia plays. They're going to play their, uh, they're going to play their nine SEC games. They're going to play Georgia tech and then they're going to play UAB and Kent state. I don't like that. I, I like playing opponents in the regular season that we don't play that often. Right. It was great. Georgia played Clemson last year. Great. Playing Oregon this year. Great. Got Oklahoma on the schedule in a couple of years. Great. Texas, Florida state, you name it. Uh, we traveled to Oklahoma State a few years ago. We traveled to Arizona State a few years ago. I love playing Power 5 opponents from different conferences that we don't normally play. And I'm worried that if we go to a nine-conference, uh, a nine-game conference schedule, Georgia Tech would make our 10th Power 5 opponent. I'm just worried UJ will say, well, we're not scheduling any more Power 5 opponents then. And I don't want that. Anyway, this was a rambling video, I guess. Uh... I guess the short answer is, do I, I don't like seeing Georgia or anyone else really play FCS opponents, but I'm not ready to, to, to say like, oh, we should ban it. I, I guess I understand the reasons and the arguments, like I said, on both sides, but for now, you know, I, 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 I guess, I guess I'm okay with teams doing it, even though I don't like it. Let me know what you think down below. Have a good morning.